I was part of the first graduating class at the academy. Overall, the experience was just very life-changing. I ended up going to Red Bank Catholic. From there, I ended up going to Georgetown University. I majored in nursing. I am a nurse in a medical surgical unit. When I was in, in trouble, they helped me with food and clothes. When you have emergency, uh, you can come to Mercy Center and you're gonna get help. For me to find this place, it was like a, uh, a miracle. The Mercy Center has changed my life in several ways. I was a wreck. They helped me develop into a person that I thought I would never be. They helped me get rid of that little boy, transition into a man. I had to come back and I thanked them for help saving my life. You know, I came back out of gratitude, like, you know, who would ever think a person that, like, like me, 18 years in prison, um, who didn't care about anything, can walk into a building and, like, at first, like, because the, the court sent me here turn that around to me wanting to come. Actually, I had been a teacher for several years, teaching 6th, 7th, and 8th grade in a variety of our schools throughout New Jersey, when it became apparent to me that I wanted to go into direct service. In 86, we bought our first building on 1106 Main Street, incorporated, became Mercy Center, and brought over a food pantry, which is still as active today as it was then. We have three main services and they answer our mission of hope, help, and healing. Our hope is in our Sisters Academy. We study different models. And I visited them up in Boston and Manhattan and they were called the Jesuit model, the Nativity School. And so I said, what elements do they have? The elements are, it is complete wraparound service for a young student. They're there at eight in the morning, they come in for breakfast, they're given a hot meal, they're given whatever services they need. We provide most things for them. Sisters Academy came about through a vision that Sister Carol Henry had. And through her years of working here in Asbury Park, she began to see the daughters and the children of the women that she had helped years ago repeating the cycle. So she began to think, what is it that we could do? And she thought of, well, what has have the Sisters of Mercy done extremely well for about 150 years, and that's educate. What makes Sisters Academy so special is that we focus on the whole child. Um, we are not only educating children academically, we also care for them socially and emotionally. In Asbury Park, these kids, it's survival, and they're fighting, and they're looking to join gangs, and they're certainly having sex early. There are a lot of risky behaviors, and our kids, we are focusing on that with them here, about making the right choices, about focusing on their goals and sticking with it. And we don't just talk about it, we're supporting them every step along the way. Many of our girls come to us without a sense of who they are and a sense of where they can go. They don't have dreams. And because of Mercy Center providing counseling and education, it's almost like giving them roadmaps for the future. They give you a lot of opportunities. If you want to go to another high school like RBC, you can go there. They help you out with your tuition. If you have a problem or a situation and you need to talk to somebody, there's always someone who's willing to lend you a hand or a shoulder. When I used to be in public school, if I would get an A, it wouldn't be a big deal because it, the things that I was doing there was kind of easy to me. But now I have more um, pride in my work. At Sisters Academy, I was awarded so many opportunities that I know I probably wouldn't have received if I went to the local school. Like I was introduced to fencing, something that I have never even heard of. They're always like, dream bigger, dream bigger. You can be whatever you want to be. If you want to be a doctor, you can be a doctor. If you want to be a teacher, if you want to, I don't know, save the world. If you want to do anything, you can do it. You don't have to just be confined to your environment. So that definitely um, made me a better person and a more confident person. I believe so much in the mission. I believe in educating these young girls and watching them look with hope to a future that can be theirs, that they can reach out, that they can touch, and they're doing it. We have our emergency services, which is a food, clothing, shelter. No food. My life has been disconnected. I'm about to be homeless. Here you come and there you can get some instant help. It's sort of like whatever it takes. We found money and had that heat turned back on for that family who had been without it. And you go home in the evening and you say to yourself, Mercy Center just saved a family's life or else they could have been found probably frozen to death the next day and who would have known? 
The state has come to us and said, we need you to be an assistant to the problems in Asbury Park. He is to the Family Resource Center where they receive the counseling, where they receive the nurturing. If it's a crisis in school, if it's a child support issue, it's any and everything that our clients face, Mercy Center is there to help. We deal very closely with DIFUS with the battered shelter for women. We have a child therapist. We have a lot of clinicians over there. All of it is free to the families. Not to reorganize their life for them, but to kind of show them that, you know, they could establish goals for themselves and accomplish those goals. We do our best with our families, and we are family-oriented. We have uh, people that we've worked with eight and ten years ago that come back and visit us. They, they become part of our family. These are not people on welfare and looking for handouts. They just can't do it right now, so you have to help them do it. They really help me. I work all day, but that's not, that's, that's not enough sometimes for to cover all the bills. I have not walked in that, that door with my head down, feeling, feeling some type of way, and didn't walk out of this door, you know, with my chest poked out, my head up, like, okay, this right here is, is, is what's up. I can do this. I would say probably 90% of everything we're given goes back out to the community. But our food pantry, all of that is donated. Anything that is given to us, we give out freely to the folks. Our school is all on donations, and that has a budget of over $600,000 a year, and we don't get any state aid. To the supporters of the Mercy Center, Every dime you give, you're making a difference. We not, are not just looking for money to, for operating expenses and to just kind of give people handouts, but to have the wherewithal to conduct programs to help them move themselves up. It's the hope of the future and, you know, it's, it's a chance to make such a, a great difference. As we park, because it has so many needs, it can seem overwhelming. But if you meet that person where they are and you help them one by one by one, it, you know, it's like a ripple effect. We're breaking the chain of poverty one link at a time. We stand on the shoulders of so many and without all of our supporters, we couldn't do it. We really could not do it. We may have the degrees and we may have the buildings, but it's the supporters that fuel us every day and co-minister with us with time, treasure, and talent.